Okay, so other requirements, um, apart from the camera itself, is you need a 302 series or higher recorder. Um, it needs to be a B series. The reason for that is the those recorders have the database function um, built into them, and that's what we're going to be um, setting up and configuring when we do this, 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 use the AMPR camera, as you can see. Okay, um, so the way the AMPR camera works is you have a detection zone which you um, configure, and in that detection zone, it reads um, or it looks for text, which it then converts to ASCII code, which is effectively the optical character recognition function within the uh, camera. So you can see here, it's converted the uh, image into the text of the number plate. So just to reiterate, I'm sure I've sort of said this um, um, already, and given the length of the video, that um, you'll, you'll get an idea that there's a lot to, um, of um, features and you need to allow appropriate time for the design, the installation, um, the commission and the support of this camera. Um, it's a, it is a pro series camera. It's, um, I mean, we're used to like the turret cameras, the eyeball cameras where we can just plug them in and, and they do just work. They do have a lot of, you know, VCA events and uh, advanced configuration, which we can use. Um, but yeah, a lot of people, you know, they're very simple to set up, uh, which, is, which is great. Um, but to get the best from this camera, because it is an AMPR camera, it definitely requires some time. It's not so much a, a plug-in and walk-away type camera. You're going to need to allow um, adequate time for the, yeah, for the commissioning and the support and the, um, yeah, the design of, of the camera itself. Um, if you do that, you're going to get better results all round. So um, these are the um, installation parameters from a Uniview. Um, a height of um, no less than two meters and no higher than six meters and um, distance wise between two and 35 meters because you've got that 10 times optical zoom on there. Um, personally, I've got it at 30 meters. I think that's probably as far as I would be comfortable going, um, but they do say up to 35 meters, but um, yeah. Um, the, the important thing here is the horizontal um, pixel, and I'll show you how to measure um, that when you install the camera in a moment. So you need a horizontal pixel width of uh, between 100 and 300 to get accurate results. Okay. Some of the other things is the horizontal and vertical angle, no more than 30 degrees. And if you're on a wonky road, then um, the tilt angle is no more than 5 degrees. Okay. So in this uh, example here, um, we've got nice control conditions. We, we've got, um, we're controlling uh, where the cars are coming into the channel here. And we know that the number plates are gonna be in the detection area around here. So we've got you know, very accurate results that we'd be able to get from that because we're controlling the conditions. The, bollard, so the, the speed ramp here is gonna control the speed of the vehicle. So we're, we're able to, um, channel the vehicle in and, can, and we know it's going to be at a lower speed so we're going to be get, um, super accurate results not always um, you know we're not always going to have this sort of ideal situation but you know that's that's a very good example of um, where the AMPR camera could be used for instance um, so as I said earlier on I mentioned that it's probably better to put it on to um, a PoE switch and the reason for that was you can access those advanced image settings from the camera directly um, if you want to um, add it um, as a EZ uh, uh, view device on the cloud, um, you can just copy and paste the registration code here. So you just go into the camera settings, go under um, uh, EZ cloud, and you can go log into your account, copy it, uh, add a new device and paste that registration code in. And that device will be added um, as a device that you can access remotely, just the same as you can your MVR. So very handy for when you're doing nighttime configuration. You don't want to be on site at uh, late at night when it's dark, trying to get the best settings for the camera at night. Much easier to do that um, when you're at home and remotely accessing from your computer. Okay, so qualify the image. Um, so as you can see here, I've drawn a, drawn a box um, around a, a number plate. Let me just show you how I've done that um, in real time. So I'll show you another good little tip as well. Um, let me just bring up my recorder. So I'm just going to go into um, playback here and I'm going to access my AMPR camera and I'm going to go back to Friday and you can see here I've got all these um, events. Okay, these, these events here are pretty much my number plates uh, or, or where it's detected a number plate. So 
And if I click play here, for instance, just a random one, and hopefully I should see a vehicle. It might have happened just before, actually. There we go. So there's one that coming in there. And there's another one coming in here. So I can just click pause. Let's just um, step it forward a little bit. I've just drawn, I know that my detection area is about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a snapshot here. And I'll just open that snapshot. So here's my snapshot. So I'll just open that image up. And then I can edit. I think I can do open with. Uh, open with. And trusty old Microsoft Paint. There's my image in Microsoft Paint. And I can use this select tool here, as I showed you on the slide. And you can just draw a box around the number plate. And down here, look, it's going to give me my pixel density. So that's the way you get your, your horizontal width to make sure that um, you're within those installation parameters of between 100 and 300. So this is probably about 30 meters away. So you can see what I was saying about earlier on. I'm right on the, the limit there. I'm just re reaching the minimum requirements, but it is working uh, very, very well at, indeed. And they, the recent up they did, update they did for this firmware for this camera allows you to set the minimum and the maximum size um, of your number plate horizontal pixel width. So we'll show you that in a minute. So that's the way you measure your horizontal pixel. Okay. Um, the tip I was showing you and how I get all these um, playback events here um, is that when you go into the setup, this is on the actual MVR itself, um, and I'm going to contradict myself earlier on, later on in my slides, and I haven't changed it, I've just realised, so um, I will fess up to that right now. Um, but if you go down to um, Camera and Motion, and I select my AMPR camera here, you can see what I've done here is I've just drawn a, a line of motion detection, and I've put the sensitivity to, to low, and I've switched the motion on, and then Trigger Actions is to record. So um, that way, I know that when, when something crosses there, which is almost certainly going to be a vehicle because of where it's positioned, um, I'll, I'll have a motion event. So I'll be able to go to playback, see my normal recording, and then motion events will be in red. And um, I found that that works really, really effectively. Um, as you can see here, I'll go back to, to a particular day. I can, I can zoom in on my events. So um, here's an event here. And I can just click on play, and I'm pretty sure... Uh, there it's going to be a vehicle but you can see here's my vehicles coming in and in and out as they're detected so works works reasonably well um i found that to be very useful the the reason i do it that way is because the database itself sits on the mvr so you can only search for number plates and those type of events from the recorder itself hopefully in the future uh, Univee will be adding that functionality to the web interface. As you can see under here, we've got smart function and we've got the vehicle uh, function here. So it sort of makes sense to me that they'll be adding it to there in the future as well. The same goes for um, the VMS EZ station. Again, we can't act, do a search on the recorder database from the EZ station um, as of yet, as of recording this, but um, it's probably going to be only a matter of time that, that function is added there as well. So. Let's go back to my slides and we'll move forward. Um, so yeah, I've put here ensure motion detection is turned off and as I've just showed you, it is actually, um, I actually use it turned on. So um, I probably just need to update that. Um, WDR is an important one. We do want to have that switched off because we're going to be controlling the shutter speed of the camera because the shutter speed is going to be very important as I'll explain later on. So just ensure that that is switched off because the way WDR works, um, it's if you've got a very bright image and everything is silhouetted in the background of that image because of the bright light coming into the camera um, sensor, then the way WDR works is it takes a very short exposure um, a very fast shutter speed and a very long exposure. And it combines the two together um, to give you an image where it compensates for that um, strong light coming into the image sensor and gives you, uh, brings everything into, into light. Okay, um, third setting is set smoothing to clear. This is actually on the recorder itself. We, we don't want blurry images, we want clear, crisp, sharp images. Set the bit rate to a VBR. Um, I'd always use uh, variable bit rate. 
Um, this is so that you're not wasting bandwidth when nothing's happening um, and obviously consuming the bandwidth or the, the space on your hard drive. Um, stream type, uh, normal and event. Um, this is actually a good little um, setting. I'll just show you that on the recorder itself. Um, if you're not aware of that, this is a good little tool um, tip. So if we go into um, setup and I select my camera and go to encoding and I'll select my AMPR camera as I've done here, you can see here you've got stream type, normal and event. So normal is when nothing's happening and event is when an event is happening, such as a VCA event, an AMPR event. So under normal um, conditions, I've got um, variable bit rate and I've got the bit rate set to low. So it's always going to be recording, but it record at a lower um, bit rate. So very useful that I don't miss anything from the camera, but I'm not consuming um, bandwidth um, on my network and consuming um, space on my hard drive. But when it does detect an event, obviously I want to make sure that I've got the best quality image that's being recorded. So that's an event and you can see there it ups the bit rate to um, three megabits. So that's normal and event recording. Very, very useful little feature. Okay. Um, U-code, um, for this particular camera, I always recommend switching it off. Um, 25 frames per second and an iframe of 50. You can actually go lower than 25 frames. You, can, you know, I think I've got mine set to 15. It really does depend on the speed of the vehicle. So the, the faster the vehicles are moving, the, the higher the frame rate you want because you've got more chance of capturing um, an image of that vehicle where you're going to have a crisp, sharp uh, number plate. Whereas if you've got a slower uh, frame rate, the vehicle's obviously moving faster, you get a trail. Um, if you if you do a playback, you'll just see um, a trail where the vehicle has just moved um, across across the image while that frame has been recording. Um, so you get a blurry image, and it's not going to capture the number plate whatsoever. So, um, so as I've just been talking about here, I've got uh, this is an example of um, shutter speed. So shutter speed is how fast the shutter opens and closes, how much light it lets into the image sensor at the back of the uh, camera. So um, for a low light situation, we have a very slow shutter speed where we keep the shutter open and we let more light into the uh, camera. And that way we, 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 get, we get an image even when it's uh, very, very dark. Um, but for fast moving images, this is no good because the vehicle is probably going to, or the object's going to move from A to B um, while that shutter is still open and you get that, that horrible trail that I talked about and, the, and a blurry image. So the computer is not going to be able to read um, a number plate from a blurry image. So we actually want to be able to control the shutter speed and use a faster shutter speed depending on the speed of the vehicle. And that's where it's a bit tri trial and error and, and, and knowledge and just working the, out what the best settings are for your particular circumstances where you're installing a camera. So um, yeah, so it, it, as you say, 10 frames per second, not, not, as, uh, not as smooth as perhaps 25 frames per second. So this, this is actually quite a handy little um, example. Um, I'll just show you that. So um, you can see here we've got 30 frames per, per second uh, playing on the top uh, person as he walks along. And then the, the middle one is 10 frames per second. There's actually not a huge amount of difference. So if your vehicle is moving at you know, 10, 15 miles per hour or kilometers an hour, depending where you are in the country, uh, in the world, um, that's probably gonna be you know, pretty accurate, you know, an, enough frames per second, maybe even 15. Um, one frame per second, as you can see, um, the person's moved quite far across the um, across the, uh, the 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 image that's being recorded by the camera. So that would be no good at all for an AMPR camera. So uh, if, if you're in doubt, um, a higher frame rate is probably going to be better to use. All right. So image parameters. This is where it gets. Um, really important. We'll probably spend a bit of time here talking about daytime image parameters and nighttime image parameters. You're going to be using different image parameters um, based on the time of day and then using, well I use a schedule, you can use the Lux setting on the camera to um, trigger it but uh, the most e easiest way of doing it is using um, a schedule and I'll show you how to do that um, shortly. So um, highlight, um, the, the camera itself comes with um, Rode um, highlight compensation. Um, so yeah, you definitely want to switch switch that on. And the way you do that is you use um, scenes up here. Um, so you select a scene that's got the road highlight compensation and you, you, you'll turn it on that way. 
Then you've got things like brightness, saturation, uh, contrast, um, all those sort of things. You'll probably want to play with those settings. Um, exposure mode, I'll go through my settings. There's some, some settings here. Um, but um, yeah, for, for night time, I prefer to use um, a shutter speed of between one and 8,000 and one to 1,000. And the way the shutter speed works, so if you've got a shutter speed of one by, um, by 25, for instance, that's 0.4 of a second. So the higher the number, the faster the shutter is going to be uh, opening and closing. Um, lower the compensation, so that um, reduces an overexposed image. Um, you've also got white balance. Um, there, there is one for sodium lamp, which was very useful for my particular installation. And then I've got a schedule um, set. So let me um, bring down my image settings a moment. Um, just bear with me, and I'll just bring those settings down. So this is my camera here. Um, so you can see, um, this, this is a good example of night time, for instance, um, 6.57, unfortunately, as I said, it's winter here, so it's dark by 7 o'clock. Um, but you can see here, it's, it's reading the number plate very, very well, um, indeed. No problems at all converting that into, into, into text, which can be searched. And here's some of the other uh, number plates on here as well. So it reads them, no problem at all. Um, if you go into um, Setup, and go, this is on the camera itself, and if I go to Image, okay, you can see here this is all greyed out. This is because I'm using scenes, and you'll definitely want to use scenes uh, when you're setting up the AMPR camera. So I'll just untick this so I can get into my scenes, and then I'll, I'll drop down and expand it. Now, I'm actually only using two, but you can have up to five scene settings. Every installation, every set of circumstances is going to be different. You choose how many that you need to do, but I'm actually using two. I'm using the default scene, which is what it's going to be on uh, when it's not on the schedule uh, scene. So I set a schedule for my nighttime settings, and when it's not on night, when it's not the schedule's not active, it automatically goes back to the default scene. So that's how I'm using two scenes. So um, firstly, how do I set a schedule? Um, so you can see here everything that's ticked. If I tick it, it will be used within my 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 scene setting. Okay. So this one is enabled because I've got it ticked. And if I click on the schedule, you can see here I've got my schedule. So it will be on from 12 o'clock to 6.30 and then from 5.30 to midnight. Um, the way scheduling work, which is a little bit weird, if, you, if you've done alarms, this is probably second nature to you. But um, with the schedule, the, the clock starts at midnight and then it works its way around the whole 24 hour. Um, cycle. So when you're doing a schedule within the software, you have to think like the software. You start at midnight, go around to 6.30, okay, on, and then at 6.30 a.m. I'm going to switch it off, and then you do a new line, so it switches on in the evening at 5.30 and goes all the way around to, to the midnight setting, and that's what I've done there. Okay, um, it's one of those things, easy once you've, you, you've seen it once, it makes sense, but um, when you're doing it and you're trying to set it like you would think it'd be logically, um, it will just tell you no, and it just won't let you set it. Okay, so first of all, I'll go through my, my daytime settings, which I've got here. Um, I'm using road, light, road highlight compensation. You can see there's, there's lots of other uh, settings there, so you choose what's right for you. But I found that road highlight compensation works very, very well. Um, I've adjusted my image and saturation. Now, this camera I've configured to be an AMPR camera. I am not using it for an overview image or anything like that. It's not a dual uh, purpose camera. It is specifically there for AMPR functionality, okay? So if your images look darker, um, but they're capturing the number plates really, really well, then it's doing its job. Um, don't try to make it a dual purpose so that you get great images, at which you you know, nice, sharp, crisp images from it, but it's no good at reading number plates. It sort of defeats, defeats the purpose. Um, so I've adjusted these ones. I'm not going to go through them. They, they speak for themselves, brightness, contrast, and things like that. Um, exposure settings. Now, I've had to play around with these settings just to work out what's best. Um, but I use a mixture of low motion blur and um, manual um, to, to, to adjust my exposure settings. Exposure is the same as shutter speed, by the way. Um, they just call it exposure on here, but it's 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 effectively a shutter speed. Um, so you can see there's there's my shutter speed set. Um, I've got compensation. I just I've just reduced that. That's why I've got a, a slightly darker image here. 
I've set the day night mode so the ICR cut filter is set to day. So it's mechanically got the filter switched on. It's not going to go into black and white mode because it's just going to do day mode. Um, I, and I do this the opposite at night time on my night settings. I've got it set to just night, which is the black and white when the mechanical filter is removed and you just get the black and white um, IR images from the camera. Highlight compensation. Um, that's the, the headlights um, or light going straight into the image sensor. Smart illumination. I'm not losing illumination, obviously, during the day, so I've got that switched off. Um, focus, I've got it set to autofocus. White balance, I've got it set to outdoor. And those um, settings there work really well for me um, during the day. Then for nighttime, if I switch to nighttime, if I select up here in the scene, you can see it's switched to nighttime mode. It's gone into black and white up here, and you can see all these settings have just changed slightly. My exposure settings, as I said before, I've now got it set to um, I've now got it set to um, manual, uh, sorry, custom, and I've got a speed of one, uh, one over 8,000, so very fast shutter speed and one to 1,000. That, that basically means that less light is going to be going into the image sensor. So basically everything, I mean, this is on during the day, but at night time, you're just going to get a pitch black image there. But when a car comes in, the IR will reflect off the number plate really, really well or I found that vehicles have lights underneath the number plates as well. Um, it will read those really, really well without um, glaring up too much. So it does its job. It reads the number plate very, very well, but everything else around it is black. So no good as a dual purpose observational type camera. Um, for that, you'll need another you know, turret camera or an eyeball camera, something like that, bullet, for instance. Um, slow shutter, I've got that switched to off. Compensation, again, I've switched that right down because um, you know, I, I, I just want the number plates. I'm not interested in having a nice bright image. Highlight, com uh, highlight compensation intensity, I've got that switched to maximum. That's when, so the vehicles I've got actually come over a lamp, uh, over a ramp, sorry, and you'll get that uh, bright light going straight into the image uh, sensor from the, from the headlights. So having that switched on to maximum really helps compensate for that. Smart illumination, this time I've got it on. I mentioned the lights underneath the number plates. I found that it really helps with having the smart illumination on because it, um, it doesn't overexpose the image with the, with the bright light going onto the, onto the number plate because number plates are obviously reflective as well. So that helps. Um, focus, I've got it to um, manual. Um, the reason for that is that, you know, I find that when you switch from daytime to night mode, you, you find that the camera, if it's on auto, it do that. It will go backwards and forwards. And at nighttime, it's got nothing to fix on to actually do the, the autofocus. So um, I, obviously, I don't want that happening. So I've switched mine to, to manual. So that doesn't happen. And then white balance at night, there is actually a setting here for sodium lamp, which there are lamps, um, street lights, um, literally just outside the gates here. So that works very, very well indeed. OK, um, and then the Bart's fog is off. So uh, I've got those two settings um, set up. This one here, the nighttime setting, I dialed in over a few evenings and, and just worked out what settings work best for me. And these settings are not cookie cutter settings that you'll be able to copy and paste. You'll have to sit down and, 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 and work out what's best for your particular requirements and your lighting conditions where your camera is installed. Um, once you've got that, um, done and I've got my schedule set. Um, all I'm going to do is click the box here, enable auto switching, and you can see it switched back to my daytime, my default setting, which is the day settings, and my camera is all set up and ready to go. So if I go back to my slide here, and you can see that's the, the settings that I talked about. So these are examples of my nighttime settings. You can see there that's that, that light I was talking about underneath the vehicle. Keep WDR off, as I said earlier on, that's important. Um, here I've obviously talked about the schedule, which I've just talked about and, and showed you how that works. Um, if you can see the number plate clearly in the live view, the accuracy of the recognition should be over 95%. And I've certainly found that to be my experience as well. Um, use scene settings, as I've explained, um, gain, shutters, day-night sensitivity, all those settings you're going to want to be um, utilising to get the best results for the AMPR function. Okay, so that sort of covers daytime and nighttime settings. Um, I was going to split this into two videos, but to be honest, I think it's, it's all relevant, so 
I'm just going to I'm just going to carry on now and just do the setting up of the LPR function. So there are two parts of this. One is you configure those settings on the LPR camera um, itself, and then secondly, you configure the LPR camera added to the database or you create the database on the recorder. So first thing I'm going to do the uh, camera um, setting. So you can see here again, um, this has to be done from the camera. You can't do it from the, from any, anywhere else. You have to do it from network login on, on the camera itself. So you want to go to um, traffic monitoring and you want to draw your detection area. And you can see here, this is a new function that I talked about in the latest firmware where you can draw you can so you can actually enter the minimum detection area, minimum detection plate size, the horizontal pixels that I talked about for your number plate, and you can set the maximum there. These are just boxes that you just draw on um, randomly. In fact, I will bring up my camera again. Um, actually, close the camera. So <laughs> let me just open it up for you again. Just bring that camera down. Um, so if I go to set up and go to intelligent, here's my traffic monitoring. Okay, these are the settings that I just talked about on the slide. Draw detection rules. So um, I draw my detection box. So here I can just adjust the size of the uh, box. And then you've got minimum plate area. This is my box up here. So if I wanted to make it bigger, I could just drag this box and make it bigger. Um, in my particular scenario, um, I don't actually don't, you know, I don't need to make it any bigger. It doesn't matter where these boxes are, by the way, they're just, they're just something you're just drawing just to set the parameters of the, um, of the horizontal, um, horizontal pixels for the number plate. So, yeah, and here you can set the maximum. And then when you do that, it works out the, 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 the so you've got minimum plate, maximum plate, and it works out the best plate uh, width as well. So these are just boxes that you can move around. Doesn't matter where they are on the screen. Once you've done that, you click on OK, and you click OK, and then it should save it up here. Click Save, and that will save the parameter to, to the camera. Um, snapshot handling is it's when it detects the number plate, it's going to take a picture of the um, of the, of the vehicle coming through. Um, so yeah, generate passing record and you know show a small color photo of the plate. Um, makes sense that you, yeah, I can't see any reason why you would ever have those switched off but there we go vehicle parameters so license plate credibility the, the, the more credible the plate the more likely it is to um, be recorded as a as as an event. So you know if you find that you're getting loss of um, inaccurate results, you might need to increase that license plate credibility so that it's not just you know uh, reading lesser qualified um, um, text. Um, and then photo here you can you can like you can with the um, um, with with ordinary cameras you can. Put your detection areas on here you can you can move these boxes around um you can put what you want to display so i've got time rego camera id things like that so it's it records that on screen text information with with the number plate of the camera when it takes a snapshot so um that's the configuration of the of the actual uh license plate detection area the next thing we need to do is is the database side of it so um, you need to do it on the camera, as I said, and then you need to do it on the, the, the recorder. It doesn't matter which order you need to, you, you do it in, but that's that's the order that I, I generally do it with. So go down to system and server. And here is the IP address. So you just put in the IP address of your recorder. You put in the um, server port. So the default port is 5073. You need to change the platform communication type. I think by default it's set to Uniview. You'll want to change that to uh, GAT1400. Um, device number, um, the, or the device number, is, is, is actually the name of the database. Um, so when we configure this, this on the recorder, we need to put that same um, database name into the recorder as well. Device ID, you can have up to eight AMPR cameras onto, on, on the same recorder if you, if you wanted. And the device ID is a way of uniquely identifying those within 
the, the database. Um, each one has to be unique, obviously, for each camera, and I believe it must be a minimum of eight characters. Um, so I just went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Username and password, that's for the recorder itself. So you set it up there and you click on save and that will save those settings for you. Um, and then you go into your recorder and I'd always do this from, um, uh, so just, uh, just go into my recorder, click and log in. One of the annoying things that I have, I have found and hopefully any of you do fix that is the you have a plugin um, you, you have your ActiveX plugin to allow you to get the video um, enabled the plugin that's for the AMPR camera is different to the one that we're using on the recorder so hence it asks me every time I log into the recorder if you want to see the video settings you've got to download the plugin but then when I log back into the camera you have to download the plugin for the camera itself again something I have fed back to any of you and hopefully they 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 resolve that shortly um, so it, it in this instance, I, I don't need the video, so I'm just actually going into the setup and configuration, so I, I won't download the plugin. I'll keep it for the camera. So um, again, same thing. Uh, this time I'm going into platform, which is my database. Um, this is where you put the database name again. The port number, 5073, is the, is the default. And here's my camera, and there's my unique device ID. So when I click on there, you can just enter the device ID. So once you've entered all that information, you click on save and the camera will show as online. If it's online, the connection is all working and you're going to be capturing and recording those number plates to the database. Here's another one that I set up earlier on. It's actually offline now because I have the camera here. So that one is shown as offline. So yeah, pretty simple to set up, not too much to it, to be honest. Um, so back to my slides, um, as you can see, snapshot handling, the server, the server name. So I'll just leave these on the screen. So if you need to, you can pause the information. And then the configuration on the, on the recorder this time. So you put in database ID, port number, your device ID for your AMPR camera. You can have up to eight, remember, and then you click on save. And it should show as online. When it's when it's all configured correctly okay um, and when that's done you'll have like this video show here you'll be able to search um, for number plates you can only do this as i said currently from the mvr itself which is um, hopefully going to be remedied or you know that they, they'll do an update to the software soon and we'll be able to do um, searches via the either ez station or hopefully from the uh, web interface as well i think that'd be a very useful feature um, I, at the moment, I've set it up with that motion um, trigger, as I showed you, so at least I can go into playback and I can see all my AMPR events as, as red lines on the playback bar. Um, but with the um, function, database function, you can actually search for number plates. So you can put in the first letter or, you know, first three letters of a number plate, and it will show you all the cars with that with those characters in the number plate for that particular date range. So this is uh, over a day. And you can click on the corresponding video and you can play play that video back. You can back the video up. Um, so yeah, that works works really well. You can do a search on all vehicles coming through and all the number plates. And this is the table view. This is actually when I was just setting it all up. So I'm actually getting a lot better results uh, from this now. But um, when you first set it up, you'll probably see, I mean, in my particular instance, I was capturing a lot, a lot of sign writing on vehicles um, because I was capturing across quite a large entrance way and the vehicles would go side side on through through the detection area. So unfortunately, I was capturing quite a lot of text, um, but we've we've managed to improve the accuracy of that now with the um, configuration that I've done over the last few days. Um, you've also got whitelist and blacklist. So whitelist is you can you can add number plates into the recorder, and um, yeah, it will allow you to um, trigger events based on 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 whitelist events. So if it was connected to, for for instance, a um, automated gate, and you wanted to put the customers and family cars into the whitelist, then when it read those number plates, you can have it trigger. The automated gate to open which is just a normally open normally closed uh, relay so uh, very useful um, to do that 
Okay, um, another way you can do search is you can do smart playback as well. So you can select the camera, go to smart, uh, select your camera and do smart playback and it will bring up a list of those VCA events that it's detected. A VCA event is effectively the, the reading of an AMPR. So you can see here in this video, um, I've got my, 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 my events here as little green lines uh, indicated when, it, when you do a search. Uh, whitelist and blacklist. If you've got a large number of cars um, that um, you want to import uh, into the database for for whitelist, um, perhaps this is at a, a workplace, place of work, and you want all the staff cars to be in in the whitelist. Instead of entering them all manually directly into the recorder, you can um, export. The, um, an Excel spreadsheet from, from the recorder and then you can just enter all the information in there and then just import it at the end. So that's quite an easy, nice and easy way of doing it. Um, and then you can set a tr um, trigger actions, as I said, for opening automated gates. Um, and that's just a, a quick example of how that, that would work with the alarm output on the back of the camera. So on the back of the camera you've got your uh, tail of cameras here. One of them will be the alarm output and it's just a normally open, normally closed uh, relay and you just, just configure what the default state is, whether that is open or closed.